Hey, this is Ryan Johnson from D3 Technologies. Today we're going to be talking about motion steadies inside of Fusion 360. So here I have a simple Delta 3D printer that I've begun assembling and creating. And you'll notice that the parts are kind of free to move, just to click and drag around, which is nice if you want to see how a model moves. But sometimes we want to do more accurate study where we're using and applying specific values and ranges of motion to see what happens to the rest of the model. So in this case, I'm going to revert back to the original position. We actually have a tool called Motion Studies inside of the Assemble rollout here. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new Motion Study. All we have to do is click any joint in the model to add it to our chart. In this case, I'm going to start with this joint, which is the X slider. And we've now got that track added to our Motion Study. It's very easy to create this animation right here on this chart. We simply click wherever we want an animation point, and we type the value we'd like our model to hold at that point. So let's go to negative 35, and just hit tab, to see what happens. And I can click out in open space to get rid of that dialog box. If I grab my bar here, I can actually preview the animation up to that point. If I want to add another point, I simply click on another point on the model, and type in the new value for that point. Now you can see in the background here the model's kind of flying out into space. Really I'd like to take this car and pull it up a little bit more. So all I'm going to do is simply click on that joint either in my browser or right on the screen if it's visible. And we've now got that joint available to work with too. So I'm going to click here and let's change this to a more appropriate value like negative 40. Also, I'd like that to happen exactly at step 20, and then maybe up here at step 50, we'll set that to negative 35. Now, as I drag my slider, we can see that motion happening. We can also use these buttons down on the bottom to restart the animation or click play to actually play through range of values. And we can adjust the speed that the animation plays with this slider here. So that is a quick, easy way to create a motion study there. Uh, oftentimes there will be multiple options for what you actually use to drive for the motion. In this case, this whole platform moves which forces the cars to move, or we can move the cars, which force the platform to move. I want to take a look at what happens if I create a motion study, but this time I choose the planar joint on the platform. You'll notice we have different directions and rotation for that starting platform. So this may be an easier way to drive the model. Instead of by pushing the cars around, we're just going to drive this through different values in the um, x and the y directions. Right. So we can see here, as we add that, we're moving 10 in this direction. If I click on this other curve, and I do negative 10, we're moving down in the vertical direction. And I've already got one of those created in the new motion studies folder that shows up once I create one. And so we'll just play that here. And if we would like our motion study to play over and over again, we can just hit that loop option to preview that simulation. So motion studies are a great tool to use if you want to drive through very specific and accurate ranges of motion. Also, if you want to render the animations you've created with these motion studies, you can do that as well. Hope you have fun with motion studies and learned a few tips there. For more information or if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to our team, D3 Technologies. Thanks.